Um, you may decide, or Facebook may decide, it needs to police a whole bunch of speech um, that I think America might be better off not having policed by one company that has a really big and powerful platform. Can you define hate speech? Senator, I think that this is a really hard question. No, Marky, it's not a hard question at all. And I think it's one of the reasons why we struggle with it. There are certain definitions that that we that we have around. Uh, There's only one definition. Um, you know, calling for for violence or. Um, Let's just agree on that. If somebody's calling yeah. for violence, we that shouldn't be there. Exactly. Anyone with half a brain can agree on that. I'm worried about the psychological categories around speech. You, you used language of safety and protection earlier. We see this happening on college campuses all across the country. It's dangerous. 40% of Americans under age 35 tell pollsters they think the First Amendment is dangerous because you might use your freedom to say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. Guess what? There are some really passionately held views about the abortion issue on this panel today. Can you imagine a world uh, where you might decide that pro-lifers are prohibited from speaking about their abortion views on your content, on your platform? I certainly would not want that to be the case. That is exactly what's happening, isn't it, Marky? You, as with Twitter and YouTube, are shutting down conservative voices. Even liberals, who are not as far left as you would like them to be, are being silenced on your platform. But it, it might really be unsettling to people who've had an abortion to have an open debate about that, wouldn't it? It might be, but I don't think that that would, uh, would fit any of the definitions of, of, of what we have. Tell that to Arik Nesbeck, who was refused by Facebook to post his announcement of running for state senate in Michigan. As well, Facebook also banned images of the crucifix because you deemed it was too violent of an image. And you know you have a problem, Marky, when you have an atheist defending Christian symbolism. And yeah, I know you admitted that censoring Arik Nesbik was a mistake, only because you were called on it. But I do generally agree with the point that you're making, which is as, we sh as we're able to technologically shift towards especially having AI proactively look at content, I think that that's going to create massive questions for society about what obligations we want to require companies to to fulfill liar and and i do think that that's a question that uh we need to struggle with as a country because i know other countries are and they're putting laws in place oh you mean like china which built a cyber firewall for the purpose of censoring what the people see hear, and share whole sites blocked as well cyber dissidents tossed in jail in fact, according to Amnesty International, China has the world record for imprisoned journalists and cyber dissidents. Is that what you mean by other countries? And I think that America needs to uh, figure out and create the set of principles that we want American companies to operate under. We have those principles established. It's called the First Amendment. Hello? Thanks. I, I wouldn't want you to leave here today and think there's sort of a unified view in the Congress that you should be moving toward policing more and more and more speech. I think violence has no place on your platform. Uh, sex traffickers and human traffickers have no place on your platform. But vigorous debates, adults need to engage in vigorous debates. I, I have only a little less than two minutes left, so I want to shift gears a little. Notice how he broke eye contact. He doesn't like what's being said. But, but that was about adults. Um, you're a dad. He's also a mother. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about social media addiction. You started uh, your comments today by talking about how Facebook is and was founded as an optimistic company. You and I have had conversations. See him curl his lips? He knows what's coming, and he's not comfortable about it. He created a cyber opioid, and he knows it. And he's done nothing to stop it. He doesn't want to separate from here. Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think as you've aged, you might be a little bit less idealistic and optimistic. Don't hold your breath. Uh, than you were when you, when you started Facebook. As a dad, uh, do you worry about social media addiction as a problem for America's teens? Well, my hope is, is that we can be idealistic, but have a broad view of our responsibility. Liar! Uh, to your, your point about teens, this is certainly something that I think any parent thinks about, is how much do you want your kids using technology? It, it, at Facebook specifically, 
uh, I view our responsibility as not just building services that people like, but building services that are good for people and good for society as well. So, as well, good for your bottom line. So we study a lot of effects of well-being of our, of our tools and broader technology. And, you know, like any tool, um, there are good and, and bad uses of it. <laughs> What we find in general is that if you're using social media uh, in order to build relationships, right, so you're, you're sharing content with friends, you're interacting, then that is associated with all of the long-term measures of well-being that you would intuitively think of. Long-term health, long-term happiness, long-term feeling connected, feeling less lonely. But if you're using the internet and social media um, primarily to just passively consume content and you're not engaging with other people, then it doesn't have those positive effects and it could be negative. You know, Marky, you and I have one thing in common. We were both born in White Plains, New York. I was born in 1957. However, it's kind of freaky in light of what's going on with you and Facebook that you were born in 1984. <laughs> That's as freaky as the original release date of the Ford Pinto, which was September 11th. But in all fairness, what's going on with Facebook is not much different than any other internet site, social media or otherwise. Google and other search engines love to track people's internet activities. And as much as I despise people like Mark Zuckerberg, it's not like we're naive about what's going on. People know that Google is tracking them every time they use their search engine, yet people use the search engine anyway. When there are search engines like DuckDuckGo that do not track you. We allow companies like Google and Facebook into our lives, we let them run our cell phones, our internet, and we think nothing of it until it blows up in our faces and then we get pissed off about it. Maybe we should be just as pissed off at ourselves as we are with Mark Zuckerberg. And maybe if this, things will change on Facebook as well the rest of the internet, we shall see, as well learning from our mistakes, or be doomed to repeat them. Thanks for stopping by and for tuning in, and please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until we talk again, I want you all to be well and enjoy life.